Hey guys, it's Bear with the Gimme Camper. So my camper here is a 2019 Keystone Cougar 29 RKS. And that's a fifth wheel. Yeah, I think that they make a lot of these furnaces similar though. So that's what I'm going to go over today. On our trip to Florida a few weeks ago, when we were in Montgomery, Alabama, our furnace went out, caused me some issues. I had a feeling that it was the sale switch. And so I watched some videos on YouTube and I was like, oh, I can do this. This isn't a big deal. Because you just go with the excess panel that's outside by the exhaust vent. So this is kind of how that all went down. All right, let's see what it's going to take to get this access panel off. What? There's not an access panel here. Keystone did not put an access panel here. Why would you not put an access panel here? I didn't even think about it until I needed to get in there. And there's no way to access the furnace here. But guess what? That sail switch and that motherboard, which is the two most common things that go wrong on furnaces apparently, is right on the other side of this wall. And if you can't get to it from here, how do you think you gotta get to it? That's right, from the inside. All right, so this is what I learned about accessing the furnace, which is a big pain in the patootie because it's under the fridge and it's not an access panel out here. And so the reason that it's a pain is not actually what you would think the, the reason would be because it's pretty easy to take in and out. But there's one thing that made me say more of those bad, bad words than anything when I took this thing out. And that's disconnecting and reconnecting the air ducts to the furnace. We'll get into that in a minute, but that's the most complicated part of it. So I'm going to tell you step by step how I chose to get into this thing. And then you can uh, decide if you want to do it yourself, if you're kind of going into this. Now, I'm not a professional. And, you know, I got to give you all those warnings of maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but it's pretty self-explanatory. So step one is to turn off the power and the gas. Sounds pretty common sense to me, right? So you want to unplug your camper. No 30 amp, 50 amp, 110, none of that. Okay. And then you want to either disconnect your battery or flip your battery disconnect switch if you have one. Then after you do that, you want to get rid of the propane that's in the propane line so that it doesn't just like squirt all over the place when you undo the uh, fitting there on the furnace, which it really probably wouldn't be that much anyway, but do it correctly and purge the gas from the line. Easiest way to do that is to turn the stove on for a second. It'll only burn for a second and then there'll be no more gas. Then the next thing is you got to have access to the furnace, right? So a lot of you are going to have an access panel that looks like this. Mine's under the fridge. Yours might be somewhere else, but it also serves as like an air return. So it's going to have some vents in it. Mine has four screws. There's two on each side and they're on the uh, inside portion of that return. Then you can go ahead and remove the vents and this is done it sounds very simple in theory and it should be very simple but it's not so i'm going to have you a kind of a close-up video of showing you this but the duct itself is fastened um you know with a like washer dryer strap around there it's fastened to a piece of conduit but the conduit this sheet metal and that's the biggest thing with this is I've cut my hand on sheet metal before and I didn't really want to and I kept having that oh, every time you would twist it and torque on it. But it's a round piece of metal and it's flat and one edge has a little tab on it. And that tab will just go down inside a hole um, to lock it in place. Now the other side, so say the tab is over here on this side, the other side is going to have a section about this big that's got a cut in the ends and then it's bent out a little bit. So that way you can slide that. Um, basically it'll kind of cup around the sheet metal on one side when you're putting it in. And then that tab will go in and then you twist it a little bit and it kind of locks it in there. Now that sounds really easy and it looks really easy, but it never moves around really easy. I can tell you that. After you get those out of there, then the only thing that holds this whole thing in here, you're gonna laugh at this on mine anyway, is these two little screws that are in the very front of the furnace 
that are pointing down in front of it. These two screws that are pointing down, just one on each side in the back of the furnace. It's all that holds it in there. Now, apparently I did see somewhere that if your furnace is kind of setting down in that cubby and you have to lift it up and pull it out, you'll probably have to remove the exhaust from the outside too. But if you just pull it straight out whenever you pull it out, then you don't have to remove that outside exhaust. And so therefore you wouldn't have to go back and seal it up. That's the thing with that. Next, you want to remove the gas line. Now, when you remove the gas line, you also want to have a wrench. You want to have a wrench on the fitting of the gas line, but you want to have a wrench over on the uh, other portion that's basically built in. It's where the fitting screws into, but there's not a lot supporting that. And if you don't have a wrench there, you can bend that or break it off. And so that's why they always recommend that you use two wrenches for this particular project. So then you can pull the furnace straight out. Now there should probably be one thing still attaching the furnace. In my case, it was the electrical lines and they're kind of zip tied to the, uh, the ceiling above it. And I could have cut those zip ties and pulled it out and all that and been fine. But I was able to pull it back enough and have enough slack where I was just able to like twist the whole thing around. And that way what was pointed toward the back wall was pointed towards me and I had access to everything. And so then you can check your cell switch. Um, I just took mine out and messed around with it and it seemed to work fine, put it back in. And then I turned the power back on and I did go ahead at that point and turn the furnace on knowing that there's no gas hooked up to it or anything. Uh, but then it did go through those um, self checks of the cell switch and stuff. So it would run the fan for a little bit and then you could hear it clicking to try to ignite. And so at that point, I realized that my problem was fixed at least because it wasn't doing the, the clicking from the sparker to try to ignite it before I did that. And so I think that it was just something minute in my cell switch or maybe a little short, maybe I've not seen the end of the problem, but it worked fine, so I put it back together. I actually also meant to take a picture of the label of the furnace so that way I knew exactly what I had if I had this problem again but I forgot to do that. So anyway, that fixed my problem. Now getting it back in there, the only thing that I would say to use a lot of caution about, because a lot of that's just going the opposite way that we just went, but when you push it back in there, that uh, exhaust tube that comes from the outside that just goes in, basically, you know, it's a little pipe and it goes into another little cylinder there and you got to line that up really good and it's hard because you can't see it. So you got to do it by feel and feel with your fingertips back there. But it'll only push back, I think, if it's in the pretty good spot there. So just be careful with that because you don't want to have an exhaust leak there that's inside your camper or the whole issue of you having a vented furnace just went right out the window. Actually, I guess it didn't go out the window, which is the problem. And so after I put that in there, I confirmed placement with my hand a few times. Then I also turned the blower back on without it being hooked up to the gas and stuff again. And then I came out to make sure that the exhaust was blowing out of the vent hole. So there's really not a lot to it. And it was really pretty easy, except for thinking I was gonna lose my fingers getting that uh, those ducts off. And some of the duct work actually fell off of that little piece of conduit I was talking about. And so then I had to do it separately. And when I put it back together, I thought well, maybe it'd be easier to put it back on separately like that. And that wasn't the case either because those hose clamps were really hard to get back on. So they were easier to do where I could reach them better and then fiddle with the thing. But it's all about getting it lined up, getting it pushed all the way in on the side, getting that tab to line up. But the problem is, is you can't see it because at least on my case, there's only one that's on that front side where I'm looking at it. And there was like four that were coming in from the sides. And then the tabs that you have to watch for to try to get in, you know, you'll have, say, the this is a pipe, these fingers are a pipe, and this is a duct here. And so the way that it's set up is those tabs, you're there up here, so you can't see, but the little tabs go in between in the middle. They point to the middle of it. So you can't see any of it. You got to do it all by reaching your finger in there, and oh, I think that's right. And it was a big pain. So... Good luck to you if you have to do this. Keystone.
Thanks for putting me an access panel outside. Not. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button.